Hey everyone, thank you for attending our seminars hosted by EduBridge. For those that do not know me, my name is Emily Sung and I'm one of the consultants here at EduBridge. Today we will talk about two topics. Number one, given the difference in GPA calculation between Canadian high schools and their U.S. counterparts, do U.S. universities take into account these factors? And number two, is applying for a scholarship a deal breaker when applying to a U.S. university? For the first question around differences in the GPA calculation between schools, it is actually a much bigger question because even within the United States, every school system is different. Some schools offer no APs, other schools offer 20 APs. The school I went to required a 94 or higher to be considered an A, while other schools may only require a score of 88 to be considered an A. On an even higher level, IB programs score one through seven. So how do universities make sense of this? This is one of the reasons why we have standardized testing, such as SAT, ACT, and AP. This guarantees that all the students who take the test and the same test and the scores are calculated the same way. As you know, this is still not a perfect indicator of a student's capability. Universities definitely take into account the differences in schools and how hard or easy they are. My colleague Bob, when he interviews a student from a school that he has never interviewed from before, he will do an introduction to the school as part of the student report so that MIT will know what the school is like. He also calls a guidance counselor of the high school and asks about their programs and curriculum so he has a better understanding of the school. Overall, what doesn't change is that schools want to see you take the most difficult classes available to you and do the best that you can on them. Generally, from what I have seen of Canadian schools, they have a slight advantage in that the score required to get an A is generally lower than the schools in the United States. Now, some other people might think that this is a little bit unfair for a school that grades particularly hard, like a 94 that is required for an A, because it's harder to get straight A's at that school. This is true, but you can also look at it in another way. If a really good student is able to get straight A's at the harder school, then that means he or she is truly outstanding. In my experience, most of the schools that are harder usually are pretty famous and usually are one of the top high schools in the United States. So universities naturally know that it is harder to get a high GPA at these schools. The worst case is to go to an easy school where you only need an 88 for an A and still not get that A. The other way admissions officers can try and understand GPAs across schools is by looking at class rank. If you don't have a if you don't have straight A's and you are still considered number one or number two in your school, then that is probably an indication that your school is pretty tough. Similarly, if you have straight A's and you are number 20 in your school, that probably means you haven't challenged yourself enough compared to the number one or number two student. Now let's talk about the second question, applying for financial aid. Many of the top schools such as MIT, Harvard, Princeton, Stanford, say that they are need blind meaning that it does not hurt your chances to get in if you are applying for financial aid. There are many opinions on whether or not this is true. Many top cons consulting companies say that the universities are not telling the truth and that colleges will go bankrupt if everyone they accepted needed financial aid. We at EduBridge disagree with this assessment. Consider Harvard. Approximately 70% of students receive some form of aid and about 60% receive need-based scholarships and pay an average of $12,000 per year. 20% of parents pay nothing, zero, not one penny. So if you ask yourself, if there are so many qualified students applying to Harvard each year, why would they accept those 20% of students if there are almost equal students available that are, that are willing to pay full tuition? If Harvard was not need blind, they would not accept a student population like this. I actually wonder how many of the counselors who say these things have actually received financial aid. Both my colleague Bob and I received financial aid from MIT. The truth is that not all of the financial aid is free money. Financial aid at the top universities are calculated based on need, and this has nothing to do with how good you are. You fill out forms with your income, assets, and there's a formula that computes your need. For example, if tuition costs $50,000 per year, and the formula calculates that your need is $40,000, then you have to pay $10,000 and the school will give you 40% of the financial aid. 
However, that $40,000 that you receive from the university comes in different parts. For example, 10 of that $40,000 may be a special low interest rate loan that you don't have to start paying until you graduate. Another 5,000 may be called work study, where they expect you to get a job on campus to help pay for school. Another 5,000 may come from the US government. Only the final 20,000 is free money that comes from the school. So at the top schools, such as the Ivy League, MIT, Stanford, if they say they are need blind, then we believe them. For example, Harvard, MIT, Yale, and Princeton are need blind for international students. However, Stanford is need blind, but only for US students, not for international students. And while MIT is need blind for international students, it only accepts 150 international students each year. It is important to research the exact policies for each of the schools that you are interested in regarding their financial aid policy. So I hope this provides help with getting a better understanding of the financial aid process and how it impacts admissions. Now I'll, I'll open the floor to questions. If you have any, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you everybody for joining us today and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, goodbye.